Welcome to Shots, the Ultra Short Story Podcast. This is episode one. You will be listening to the stories Tank and Circus. Tank. Every morning before dawn, Trev urinated in the gasoline tank of his neighbor's car. He unscrewed the cap with his left hand, meanwhile unzipping himself with his right hand, and emptied a night's worth of his bladder in the hole. Next, he screwed the cap back on, while simultaneously zipping up. Then he went to work, relieved of his jealousy for a day. This went on for a couple of weeks. Then it started to screw with his neighbor's car's engine, apparently. It was mild compared to what was happening to Trev's head, but still. On the last day, the car didn't get the neighbor to work, but caught fire on the highway instead. It's hard to say whether the fire had anything to do with Trev's acid piss. It no longer mattered to the neighbor anyway. He left behind a wife and two kids, and the widow was mourning visibly without much support, so she asked Trevor in for coffee. She knew him as Trevor, not Trev. And he succeeded in dragging himself from his mind swamp and doing something good for a change, cheering her up a bit and being nice to her kids. This went on for quite some time. Eventually, he couldn't stand it anymore and longed for the days when he envied his neighbor, his happy little family. Circus The circus descends on the village And that same day, the ringmaster knocks at the Bizarda family's door. Would it be possible for him to have a look at their son Jacob? Something that comes as no surprise. It's actually a relief. They're all glad the boy has a place to go, since he no longer dared to leave the house. And they don't consider relinquishing him to physicians, who will only want to cut him open, not a very kind deed. A couple of days later, on the night before Jacob is due to travel away with the circus for good, Esta, the girl next door, asks him, Jacob, will you touch my breasts? I want them to light up like you do. So that's what he does, happy with all that sudden appreciation, and afterwards her breasts do indeed glow in the darkness of the barn. The circus folk have come up with a prominent part for Jacob on their show. They'll magically lower all the lights. The ringmaster will yell, ladies and gentlemen, the illuminated man. And there he'll be at the top of the tent, waiting for the audience to see him and applaud. Then he'll come sailing down and perform acrobatic stunts. And in a grand finale, kiss the most beautiful girl in the audience and make her cheek glow in the dark. But Jacob slowly pines away because in the end they still see him as a freak, a monster with a skin that emits enough light for you to read a book by. Every night he dreams of Esther, his next door neighbor, and how she glowed, round and firm. And the circus travels on and on until Jacob's halo, that miracle of light, slowly fades used up by his longing for Esta, and they remove him from the show and banish him to the cages as a manure cleaner. These stories have been written and narrated by M. H. Vasseur. The music by Rachmaninoff has been performed especially for this podcast by Jeroen van Veen.